seems legit. Hi everybody. Sorry you can't see me today. We're doing a big bag. Uh, so this is Driftwood by Needle and Anchor. Um, and I just love it. So I have put a giant embroidery on the front. Um, it's got these really cute little side bits. Don't mind the shape of my bag. It's only just been made. It needs to rest for a minute. Um, I did the handles a little bit differently because I ran out of this glorious vinyl. Uh, but it's got hidden strap connectors. It's got this cool little double zip. And then on the inside, we have a zipper pocket on one side and a slip pocket on the other. Now I did my slip pocket a little bit different, again, because I didn't have enough of this vinyl, but I show you how to counteract that. So if you would like to see how this bag is made, please stay tuned. So I did not start the way the pattern starts. I took two of my pieces and then sewed them down the center and then I folded back the seam allowance and top stitched it down flat. And then I have embroidered a very glorious dragon on the front. This is an Urban Threads design. It is fabulous. Uh, my colours are slightly different because I have a different brand, but near enough is good enough and I think it looks fabulous. Uh, and this vinyl is from Spotlight. I don't know if they still have it or not. It was from a while ago. So I did this, which is not the order of the pattern, but to get this effect, this is why I did it. Because uh, to pre-record, I needed to get it done. Also, I didn't want all the extra bits, so I have that slightly out of order. So I just thought I'd point that one out. Um, I've also gone ahead and ironed on my base stabilizer, and I've just ruled some lines, and where the lines intersect is where my feet are going to go. Now, different people do feet different ways. The pattern has six feet. I am using four. Ugh. Oh my god, my muscles. Ugh. So we will need a hole punch. So this is a two mil hole punch. And I'm just gonna punch right over the intersections. And then that way the feet will be dispersed evenly. You can obviously use more bag feet. You could use five, put one in the middle. You could do six. You could do eight if you really wanted to. Feels a bit excessive, but it might look good with the design that's going on in your head. So, now that I've punched my holes, I'm going to take the post parts and push it through towards the top on all four. Now, because these holes are sm small, um, they will stay there and not fall out, which is awesome. Then I'm going to flip it over and push my bag feet on top. I'm then going to line it up. This is a, I think it's a 10 mil hole punch or 12 mil. I'm really not sure, to be honest. It came with my machine when I got it and I've just never bothered to buy different sizes because this one does everything I need. I'm pretty sure it's 10 mil. And I'm just going to squish the feet down and on. Then we can put that aside. Um, I do have the instructions here. I am trying to follow it as best I can the way the pattern is doing it so that if you are following along with your pattern, you know what's going on. Uh, but if I diverge slightly, I apologise, but we all know I'm probably going to. I don't intentionally do it. I just get sidetracked. So we're going with the bag handle connectors right now. Uh, it does have a pattern piece. I am not showing you though because it has measurements on it and we all know I don't give out measurements so we should have four of these these are going to hold our rectangle rings or round rings if you choose that so I'm just going to line them all up sticky tape them all together at once because this is a little bit quicker You obviously don't have to do it this way. You can go and do it the way I usually do, which is one at a time. But that does work out a little bit quicker because you're not putting down your snips all the time. And then you just cut between so that they separate. It also ensures that the tape does go all the way to the end. And then I'm going to peel off that backing and fold both sides into the center and push down. 
Now, depending on your vinyl, you may want to scratch it on the edge of something or add clips to it if it's not going to stay where it's told. Squish it down. I'm going to squish all of them at the same time. Uh, if your vinyl lifts, you may not want to squish them all down at the same time, or you'll need to add clips so that it all stays still. Like that. And that one. Alright, so these are now our uh, D-ring connectors or strap connectors. Um, handles. We need some zipper tape as well. So that's next in the list. I almost want to use the dark red so it goes nicely with the lining. But we'll go with the outside. Um, you know what? I think that will still look lovely. So we're going to do that. I never really plan these things beforehand. I let them happen. Because it works for me. I know some people like to have everything prepped. I like to have everything near me instead. So that I can change my mind at the last second. And it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to cut the zip tape. We're going to need some more, so I'm going to leave that aside. Um, and it says to put two zipper pulls, one in each direction. So before I go any further, I am also going to singe that with a lighter. I already did the other end, so we're good. Whoops. One side in, feed the other side. Now this is always easier when it's not attached to something. Um, when it is attached to something, and it's just, for example, if you're trying to fix a zipper, a zipper jig is always extra handy. I recorded a video yesterday, which you won't see for another little while, um, and I actually forgot to put a zipper pull on. So instead of, and that was at the end of the bag, so I showed you how to fix that problem. Uh, but my zipper jig definitely helped me. So, we've done that. Now... We need piece uh, G, which is our zipper panel. Like I said, I am trying to follow the pattern. So I've got two. I haven't interfaced these because um, I didn't want it too thick because this is extra thick. So it's, it's a bit of a balancing game. I'm going to put that over there. So they want us to, on the back, draw a line like this and that and then I'm going to flip it over and do it to the other end and then I'm going to do the same thing to these but I am going to use a like it a marking pen if possible. I've only got red but it should still show up which it does. One, two and then same with the other end. So we're marking an even distance on all of the ends. Like that. And then it says using double sided tape and then bound. It uses more words than that, but I am paraphrasing. So, one. You could also iron this down. Um, I probably wouldn't iron my vinyl because you'll wreck it. But you could iron the lining ones if you wanted to get up and do that. Or if you have your ironing board set up next to you. I do not have space for that around me. I've got my cart, my pattern, and then the other side's got all the other stuff. So there's no room for an iron next to me. So I'm going to use double-sided tape for everything. 
And I would also do this off camera too. I don't think I would get up. Unless I have made this bag a few times before and I remembered to fold that over and iron it while I'm doing all the ironing on of the interfacing, I would still just use the upside down. Because the vinyl is thicker than the in the lining, I can line them up and do them both at the same time. The lining was too flimsy to do that though. So now that I've done that, peel it off, bend it at the mark, fold it over and stick. And I'm really gonna kind of push that seam to make sure that it lays flat. There, there, so that's one or two ends, depending on which way you want to look at that. I'm really uncomfortable in jeans today. I went out to my horses this morning because he was getting his feet trimmed. So I'm in jeans. And I have to say, they are very uncomfortable to sew in. I'm not a fan. At some point, if I need to stop the video, there is a very good chance I'm going to change my pants while I'm at it. It is good to be comfy when you're sewing. Don't worry what you look like. Worry what you feel like. If I feel comfortable, I'm not concentrating on how uncomfortable I am so I can concentrate on what I'm doing instead. Pull off the last two backing bits. And pop them in the bin. One and two. Okay, so now we need the center of our zipper. And I'm going to put a clip on both sides. So I'm just folding it in half. Some people clip the zipper tape. I really don't like to do that because it frays a lot. So it's it's just not for me personally. Um, you are obviously welcome to do it. I just don't like it. So I'm going to find the centre and put a crease. And then where that crease is, is where it lines up underneath the tape. Like that. And then the same with the top. So because of this one's vinyl, you can crease it or you can do a little snippy snip. Like that. And then I'm going to put that one right sides down. Line it up and add it in. Now, I'm going to show you why I don't normally do three at a time. I find it takes a lot more effort to line them all up evenly. And I'm also going to pull them all the way over here so that they will not distort any of my stitches and I don't have to think about them. If you're worried that you're going to accidentally pull them off, put a clip on the end like this or you could stitch over the end as well and that will stop that problem. Clip and clip. So that's that done. And then we're going to stitch. So I'm just going to use a normal seam allowance that is for zippers. I'm going to stitch and back stitch to lock in the stitches. And then we're just going to stitch from one end of the fabric part to the other. You want to try really hard not to stitch on your zipper tape. Otherwise, you're going to see that particular stitch. And then trim those tails. Whoops. Right. Then what does it say to do? Do the other side and then top stitch everything. Okay. Now, my vinyl is quite stiff, so I'm going to have to make a real point to fold that over. So 
just be conscious of the choices of vinyl that you make and how much interfacing you put everywhere. Because right now, this is not being my friend. So I'm going to actually crease the vinyl before I do anything else in an attempt to get it to work. Like that. And then we're going to clip. Now, because this is a stiff vinyl, I am going to use more clips than I normally would to make it stay in place because you want these right up against each other like this. Now, instead of using fabric ends for the zipper, I'm going to be using zipper ends because they're fabulous and I love zipper ends. I'm a little bit addicted. And also I have my screwdriver back, which if you saw a few videos ago was an issue. My husband and child ran off with it. Okay, so I'm going to stitch to this side. I'm going to start, actually, I'm going to start in a corner on the raw edge so that you won't see my back stitches. We're going to come up and then we're going to pivot. Now, as you can see, I'm stitching slowly because this is thick. I don't want it to slip. And I want it to look as professional as I can make it. Also keeping in mind here is double the thickness it normally is because we fold it under the raw edges. So just keep all of these things in mind when choosing your fabric and your machine's capabilities. And back stitch. So that's fun. Now I've got one on. Let's do the other side. It's the same deal. Fold it in half. Make a crease. Open it. Find the center. And then it should line up here with this edge. So if you drew a line across there in chalk, it should line up perfectly because we folded it all the same. If yours is not lining up the same, you can either take in or out that tucked under bit because it just means when you cut it, they weren't 100% correct, um, which is fine. We just need to make sure. So like right now, I am about a mini bit out. I can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this open and then fold it back so that it lines up. That is a perfect example. Ta-da! Problem solved. You can also see I'm back to doing one at a time. I just prefer it. It's my thing. This one, however, is totally correct. So it lines up with the edge of the other one. Add it into the clip. Same with this end. Now put another clip in there just for good measure. Right. So we're going to stitch, back stitch. Trim off the tails so that they don't get in the way. And then finger fold the vinyl back. It might need some coaxing depending on how thick it is. This is a very stiff vinyl. Uh, so it's not my friend as much as I would like to hope. But it just means a bit more fiddling to get my glorious results that I want. And that's okay. So I'm going to put clip right in that corner. And then I'm just going to line up the exterior and the lining fabric along the raw edge. 
And you can see I'm putting them fairly close because I don't want it to shift because then it'll look weird. You could also, if you want to, if you were worried about your zippers, you could start with the zipper ends and then put this one in the middle. Um, much for muchness. So again, we're going to start in the corner. Stitch, back stitch. Keeping in mind it's very, very thick here. So take your time. Also, because it changes colour with reflections, you want to go slowly to make sure you are following the correct edge and not the false colour that kind of pops up at you. And done. So now I've got our panel. I'm going to take my zipper ends. And my electric screwdriver. I got this from Bunnings. Uh, not Bunnings, sorry. eBay. I tried to get one from Bunnings. They don't stock them. Then I'm just going to fold over the end of the zip so we get a triangle. And shove it in. Literally shove it. That's what I'm going to do. Like so. And then take my screw. Now, luckily, the end of this is just, like, a little bit magnetic. So it helps to hold the screw most of the time while I'm trying to put it in. Like so. And, nope, so that already went in crooked. I was watching it. There we go. So that has got a nice sharp pointy end to it. So it uh, stabs through the zipper, holding it. Excellent. Next end. You can also push these back to the center if you're worried about them now. I'm going to fold it under and under. And I'm going to shove the end in. Oh, and I've just put that on backwards, so let's try that again. There we go. Screw the other end in. You don't have to use an electric screwdriver for these. You can use a manual one. I just find it easier and since I do a lot of screwing I wanted something quicker and better on my wrist because I also don't want carpal tunnel not that I know that that's how you get it 100% but let's just avoid it anyway oh. now normally you would just grab one of these well, and then the other one here, but I'm going to have it nice and long and connected because I wanted to do my embroidery. So normally you would take these two and sew them on this side instead of down that center line. So I need this one here like that. And we're going to stitch it. So I'm going to line it all up so it's lovely and even. I'm going to start... Back stitch, like that, pull and trim the tails. Then I'm going to lay it down and open it up like so. And I'm going to top stitch each side like I did with the middle seam so that everything's matchy matchy. And up this side. Done. 
I'm also about to run out of bobbin thread because this was not a full bobbin when I started. So now we've got this cool funky side shape. And to go along with your cool funky side shape, you should also have some lining pieces in the same shape. So we're going to put these right sides together and I'm going to find the center point by folding it in half like this and creasing it and then I'm going to clip it so it just sits over like this. So the idea is, is it should fit beautifully over your little archway. Now because it's a curve I am going to use quite a lot of clips to hold it in place. may seem like a lot of clips but I just really don't want it to shift. So we're going to stitch this now. Move everything out of my way. And back to adjoining stitch length. Oops. This is why you're meant to hold on to that tail ladies and gentlemen. Which I never do. And this is the consequence of that action, or lack thereof. Okay, stitch, back stitch. So there, then we're going to pivot. And around we go. Now I'm going slowly because this is a funny shape. It's a relatively tight curve. I don't have a lot of room, so that's hitting over here. I know I have more room than a domestic, so if you're having that problem, just roll it up like this so that you can hold it. Top and center, around the other side. That is a very steep curve, so just keep that in mind. I perfectly just ran out of bobbin thread. I definitely run bobbin roulette at that time. So I'm just going to pull that out and replace it with the fresh one that, oh, see, and it just unraveled every time. That's all right. I don't have a magical way to make them stay done up. It was fine until I picked it up and then it just gave way. That went on wrong. I felt that. See, it's like I know stuff. I can usually do this by feel, but that felt wrong. And then it clicks in and we can do one full rotation of the needle and it will pull up your bobbin thread. Okay. Um, trim down the seam allowance. I can do that. You just want it thinner so it's going to be easier to bend, I believe is the point of that. And you may be asking if you're new to bag making, well, why not just have a less seam allowance? And the answer is because it's easier to do a big one and cut it down than do a little one because you're more likely to slip off the edge. I could have also used my zigzag scissors for this, but I didn't. So there we go. Turn it to the back and double side it down. I could do that. Double sided tape on this side. Um, I 
Now, since this is a curve, you can see it's not sitting flat. It's got a lot of little bumps. Let them happen as they want um, because when we pull the tape backing off, it won't be as thick so the bumps won't be as prominent and they won't bother you. Okay, so just make sure it's stuck. And then, see as I peel that off, because it's a lot thinner, they'll all just sit down now. So you can start from wherever, but we need to crease it at the vinyl and then stick it down. Now this is obviously going to give me some grief, I can already tell. So what I'm going to do as well, since it wants to misbehave, is I'm also going to add some clips. Now I know that's going to be more inconvenient to sew, but on the other hand, at least everything's going to stay where I'm telling it to. And I'm going to put my clips on upside down, so then when I flip it over and stitch it, they'll be up the right way. Just little things you want to think about. I'm also doing it away from me as opposed to towards me because then I can really see where that edge line is and I find it easier. You can do it either way, but that's just why I'm doing it this way. Now, as we get to that top section, it's extra, extra tricky. So I'm actually just going to put a couple of little snips so that it's more flexible and will actually do what I'm asking of it. You just want to pull it back and down. Then I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna work up to that point last because it's already giving me grief. Now, th the reason I am struggling so much is because I have picked such a stiff vinyl that it doesn't want to fold. It doesn't want to behave itself. So that's why it looks like I'm really, really struggling. It's not as bad. If I had have used my normal Pacifica standard vinyl, it's a lot more flexible. So this wouldn't have been as long, I guess. Wouldn't have taken as long. Okay. Back clip. Then I'm going to flip it to the front to make sure that it's back far enough and clip it down. So there you go. Now it's all lovely and clipped. And then we're going to top stitch that down. Oop. Now, I'm going to go very slowly with this because I want it. This is an accent point where people's eyes are going to focus. So I want to make sure it looks good. Pretty much. making sure that it doesn't come back to the front because that defeats the purpose and backstitch 
for good measure. Voila! So we've got a little cute hole, I guess we could call it. Alright, so now we need our bit that goes in there. So I've used black. Um, just because I didn't really have a plan for anything else and black was going to look good. And so then the idea is, is we need to pleat the top. I flip it over, line it up like that and put a pleat in the top so that it's going to sit to find the top we should fold it over and put a little knit like that so that is now where the top is there's my little pleat And then that is going to sit in there like so, I believe is the idea. So if I just flip that over for a second, I think I've got my pleats the wrong way. Because you can do pleats two ways. So I want them to the front, not to the back. Like that. And then the centre of the pleat goes to there. And then we have to line everything up. So that's going to go over like that and like that. So I might need to add some double-sided tape, I think. I'm going to do this in sections. Instead of the one big one I did earlier, we're going to do this in sections because I think it's going to be easier. I'm hoping so at least. Top section where the pleat will be. And then this side, like that. Press it down so it actually sticks because that's very important. If you ever can't flick up your stuff, grab your snips. It's very good at getting the paper off the back of double-sided tape. So it says to line up the bottom bit first. Like that. Like that, and then the other side, and then you should have all this excess at the top, which will be a pleat, I believe. See how that's going to work, and then it's going to pleat out slightly. We just need to make sure that it's even, which is easy because we created a snip on where that needs to go. Like that and then beautiful so I am just gonna put my finger there and then I believe we are going to stitch on the inside of our first lot of stitching you'll notice this hand is not moving because it's holding that pleat in place Now it gets a bit thick here, so make sure you slow down. And I'm going to roll this so that I can get it under my machine without hitting anything and wrecking. Boom. Side of the bag. Love it.
And then we need to do the other one. So this other one's going to become a little bit more tricky. Oh no. No, we should be right. Um, so normally you would have two separate bits, unless you've done embroidery like me, in which case it's a little bit... It's probably going to be trickier. I can't actually promise that because I didn't try it the other way. And I'm using a stiff vinyl. So I actually made this bag very, very difficult for myself. Um, but it'll be fine. I'm not worried. If I was worried, I would have rethought it and maybe done this one off camera. So unless it's my pattern, usually you're seeing me make something for the first time. Just for anyone that's new here. I don't secretly make one off camera and then come and do it for you. I do it as I'm reading the pattern. So sometimes I skim the pattern. Um, so I look through the pictures of this, but I didn't read on how to do any of it. Because I just assume it'll be fine. I trust the pattern designers and the way they've written it, and I can usually understand it. So definitely helps my cause. So now we're going to go and do our little, um, I was going to say accent. This is not an accent. This is a, I've lost the word now. Facing. This is a facing. That's the word I want. All right, line up your ends. Bring it round to find the center. So that center that I've just created will go at the center up here. And that is the easiest way to attach that. So I'm just clipping around. I've done a couple at the top and then I come straight down to the bottom because theoretically it's all going to line up. Um, and you do it, you want to do it this way because if you pull on this, I didn't interface it because I knew what it was going to be. I did slightly read the pattern. Um, and because I didn't interface it, it's more likely to stretch on the bias part, so up this curve. So I do the top and the bottom and then kind of go and meet somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be directly in the middle when I say middle. It's just anywhere between that point and this point. I am classifying as the middle. Now, whatever pleat you did on the other side, we have to just make sure that we copy it for this side. Because you can do a concave, no, convex or concave pleat. And it will look slightly different. I have done a convex because it comes out. Concave, I remember because it goes in. A little bit of English lesson for you there. All right. I want to do this side, I think. And you want to make sure you're doing the proper seam allowance as well. So just concentrate on that too. Not that you don't have enough to concentrate on, but still. So you can see I've rolled up this bag so that I can get it into the throat of my machine. For anyone who doesn't know, this area here is called the throat. I don't know why. It wasn't me that named it, I promise. I would have picked something fancier. Just gotta take the clips off as we go. Get around that top curve. Again, it's a really tight curve, so do make sure you're going slow and paying attention to everything. Now, for this side, we are going to use the zigzag scissors because I love them. Oh, I'm also getting hungry. Not that that affects you guys at all. Alright, snip up. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because before it was a little bit trickier to turn it under. So I'm hoping that by doing this, especially at this top section, it's going to be more flexible because I've used the zigzag scissors. Uh, but where there's bulk, just be really careful that you don't push so hard that you go through the bag because you've effectively wrecked it and we'll have to cut another one or another section. And I don't have any more of this vinyl, so we're not doing that. Now, I picked gold hardware for this bag, but it also would have looked good with black hardware or rainbow hardware. 
There's actually no right or wrong answer for hardware. It's kind of just what you like. All right, flip her over. Now, again, yours probably isn't joined in the middle, so you don't have to deal with this much excess stuff going on. So I'm going around. Now, again, you can do this in sections or you can do it as one continuous piece. You have seen me in this video, so if I do it both ways, no right or wrong, whatever you're feeling. Or just do both like I did. I'm just going to pat that down to make sure it sticks. And peel off and around. Awesome. In the bin. Have a drink. I'm telling you that because you can't see and I don't want you to think it's gone weirdly quiet for no reason. And then I'm just going to start pulling this back like we did before. And I am still going to clip it because we all know that my vinyl is not my friend today. And again, I want the clips to face the vinyl side because that's the side we will be stitching from. Back. And back. Do, do, do. Oops. So use as many clips as you feel is necessary. Uh, depending on your vinyl, you may want more or less than me. So the hardest bit's this top bit where all the bulk is. Uh, so maybe you would want to consider cutting that seam allowance away. As that may help it to sit where you want it to. May not too. I'm going to get to there and then I'm going to do the other side. More clips. Don't be shy with your clips. Doesn't matter if you do two stitches and then have to stop and remove it and go again and again and again. Because what's more important is that this sits where you want it to. Now if you've got a really soft, flexible, glorious vinyl, or if you did this in fabric, you could probably design it in place. Which would also be wonderful. Okay, so now that I'm getting up into this end, like that. Now I am just going to hold that bit when we get to it, uh, which should be fine. Oh, maybe I can get some clips on there. Like that. Alright. So again, I need to roll up this side so that I can get it in the machine. If you're using a quilting machine, you probably don't have this issue. Whoa. Clips are popping off everywhere. So this one is a quarter inch because the, the next stitch has to go between the edge and this one. So don't make this too thin or you'll make your own job harder later. So I can unroll that now as I go around. back 
back stitch at the bottom like we always do then more double-sided tape see I'm actually quite happy that I didn't interface this now because it is moving much easier for me so then again double-sided tape trim down and down then I can peel off the backing of all of it And then this one, this one I always have more trouble with, so I grab my snips to pull it off. I shouldn't say always, last time I did. All right, and then our other little bit is going to go in here and in here, like so. Oh, you know what I didn't do, actually? So just pull that off. I need to find a center point because that's really important. Now we can go again. I'm just going around, sticking it down, and then again, there, back and back, because then it should look the same as the other one. See how it sticks out? Um, but if you've done in, just make sure you do that again. Again, we're going to roll this up so that it'll go under the machine. And that has come off. But we're going to start on the other side anyway, so I'm not really worried. So I'm not moving my hand from that pinch that I'm holding. And then you want to go slowly over that because it's thick. And then I will come back and stick this down to do the other half. Love it. So this is now what I've got. Next step is the hidden strap connectors. So I need to grab this bad boy. And we are going in and hold on. there and there And then measuring across there like that so that's one I'm just gonna measure them all so mark the dot and then I'm using one inch straps so I'm drawing a one inch line and then putting another dot in down dot 
line dot. Now you don't have to put the dot and the line. It depends on how erasable your stuff is, really. Mine's doing okay. Alright, so that's my four strap connect spots now marked. So I'm going to take a craft knife, which looks like it's gone walkabouts now. That's alright, I reckon I've got one. I can see one just here, so let me grab that. But we're going to get a craft knife, and I'm just going to mark this because it is vinyl now if it was fabric we do it the way it's in the pattern with the facing and stuff but since mine is a lovely thick stiff vinyl i am quite happy to do it this way so i'm just cutting from circle point across the straight line which is why i drew it to the other circle point now because it's only little i'm using a craft knife if this had been a longer line you could also use your rotary cutter i mean you still could for this but i personally feel like this is a craft knife job so you can cut left to right or right to left so there's my four little holes put the lid back on so i don't cut myself later is important now three out of my four uh strap connectors popped open which i did kind of anticipate it was going to do but that's right so if you want to we can top stitch these i'm going to because now they're annoying me because they won't stay still and i don't want to have to deal with that while i'm trying to put them through the little slits that i've just made so i'm just going to top stitch I'm going to go up to a slightly more decorative length, up the top. So I'm doing one eighth of an inch from the edge. You don't have to stitch them, uh, but I want to. It's also going to add a little bit of something else to look at on the bag. If I'm going to be fancy, I may as well go full out fancy. So then I'm going to stitch one and then cut this one off and then I can just do the rest. And I'm just chain stitching them because it is quicker. Like so. Rotate that up. Now we just need one at a time for this. So I'm going to push this into the hole. I don't quite want to go halfway. I want to go a little bit less than halfway. So I'm actually folding it in half to make sure that they're going to line up. And then I'm going to stitch it down above the slit. About an eighth of an inch because we don't want to we want to stitch it to the bag not just through the hole so this will be above the hole now and then we're going to do the next one so i'm going to do all of these to push them in because i don't want to have to go back and forth with the rivet press Take it off, trim the tails. Next. Actually, if you fold it in half first, it'll help you find the halfway point. Then we push it through the hole. again fold it in half find the center 
push it through the hole like that. Now, obviously, you could also do full strap connectors depending on the look of the bag you want. I am trying for the most part to stick to the plan. Ah. Rectangle rings. I am using thin ones, not chunky ones. Uh, it just changes the look slightly, but it's not a big deal. So I've threaded it on. Now I'm going to push the rest of that through the hole. Like so. And then bring it and pull it down. So that that is all the way in. No, it can still even go further than that. Like so. And then I'm just going to stitch across the top. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, your machine might not allow you to stitch this many layers. I'm also going to put rivets, but you could instead just put rivets. It will depend on your capabilities. Well, the capabilities of your machine more than anything. I have faith that you can do it. So on, bend, through the hole. Which sometimes, especially with difficult um, vinyl, can be tricky. So don't be disheartened if it's not all just bending to your will. Also, if you've never made this bag before, I probably wouldn't use a super stiff vinyl like I did. That was a little bit silly on my behalf because I didn't know what to expect. So you have now officially been warned about that. So in we go. One, two, three. Back through the first one. Whoa, did you hear that? That was nearly going to snap something then. Tricky, tricky. Makes me nervous stitching layers. Always has, probably always will. I will have to come back and cut off all these tails because there's a lot going on in the back here. That, whatever. Oh, actually, and that one. And that one. Just cut off all the tails. You'll be better off. I've even got a tail sticking out there. Right, so I've got two. Third one. I'm going to put my hand underneath to kind of help lift up that whole space and get it in. What else would look really cool on this, which I no longer have, uh, would be like spikes. Because of the whole dragon thing, I probably would have done spikes if I still had them. So this is probably going to go and make me buy spikes for the future. Now I don't backstitch on really thick things. Um, because I usually always snap a needle when it's reverse. Especially when it's thick. If you reverse through thick, I don't know what happens to your machine, but it's not my friend. Okay. Lucky last one. Now again, your panels might be separated. I don't think we've joined them yet in the pattern. Alright, thread it down. Pull on it to bring it all the way down. And then we're going to top stitch. That could probably even go a little bit further. There we go. Right, stitch. You can even manually hand crank. If you are worried about thickness, you can hand crank it if you want to. Oh, it's starting to come together. I love it. Right, next section. I have pretty much now done all of that. Oh, rivets. Right, we're doing rivets. Because I want to. 
Now these are both stability and decorative. You don't have to do them. We have stitched it. You don't have to do rivets, uh, but I want them because it's going to look cool. Now your panels are probably still separated, so it's probably a little bit easier for you to manoeuvre. But if you have done embroidery like me, you can see that it's not impossible. Just a little bit more fiddly. Um, and I probably look even more fiddly because I'm trying to record and not hit the camera. Because we all know I've done that in the past. Alright, I'm going to push in from the top because that's the way I've punched the hole. And I always find it easier to push rivets down rather than up. That's just my personal experience. But you can go from the bottom. And if you're using silver capped, uh, like, not silver capped, single capped rivets, you'll want to go from bottom to top. Now these are just little 7mm rivets. Or 6mm? 6mm? 7mm? I don't know. One of them. They are smaller. which makes them adorably cute, which is why I'm using them. And then I can still use the same size rivet press to squish them down. Now one day when I have a more permanent studio, I will be putting this onto like screwed into the table so it will be a we'll have to move the camera to watch me do it but it will also make it a lot easier All right now we've got rivets so we're good so the next step is to do this seam uh which i've already done and now we're going to do the back one so i'm just going to join this together so you would do the same thing with the other side and I could have pre-recorded the first bit but I did this like two months ago it's been sitting here waiting till after Christmas so joining stitch length we're gonna stitch down Stitching along, you can hear how thick that vinyl is, can't you? Then we're going to do the tricky bit and we're going to top stitch it. So the first thing I want to do is press that open as best I can before I try and stitch it that way. Then I'm going to hold it and tuck it under the machine. I'm going to go slowly as this is all going to get a bit skew if in a minute. And I'm peeking over. Now I'm going to peek inside it. So I have to maneuver myself around and squish the bag so that I can see. Now again, Stiff vinyl, being slightly stubborn, making sure my fingers are well and truly out of the way because I don't want to get caught. Pivot it around when we get to the end. Make sure the needle is up so that we can maneuver to the other half and then down. Now this side will get easier and easier as the bag comes out of the machine, see? It's just the first side that's tricky. But it is done, and so now we have the top stitching on both sides, because it looks nice. And... okay. So we are taking our base piece and inserting it. So we need the center because we always need the center of everything. 
And if you follow my tutorials, you could almost just find the center of every piece before you start, because we all know I'm going to ask you to do it. Then I'm going to line up that center point with one of the center seams. Now, if your fabric is directional, think about which way you want the base to be. If it's not, don't worry about it. So I'm clipping with the clips facing the base piece and not the bag because that is going to be the easy way to sew this. So that's the way we're going to do it. Like that. So I'm just going to push this out of the way, bring it under the machine and stitch. And back stitch. And I'm going to stitch to the end of where the stabilizer finishes and starts on the base piece. Then I'm going to grab the other side and match that up with the other seam using the same clips. Now you might need more clips for the second side because I'm now fighting the bag shape and how it wants to lay down. So that's just a thought for you. You'll see I do need more clips. I only put them a little bit closer but it's helping to hold everything in place so it's worth it. Like that. Then again with the base side facing up we're going to start where the stabilizer is, we're going to stitch and we're going to back stitch. Now I'm using the whole weight of my arm there to help guide it through. It's probably excessive and I don't need to, but we're doing it anyway. I don't know if you just heard that noise on the video, but I thought there was like a light bulb shorting out then. But it was just the wind blowing some um, blinds. Tripped me out for a second there though. Right, scissors. I'm going to cut right up to and next to where we just did those stitches. So here's where the stitches end. There's my little cut there. So I haven't gone all the way to the stitches, slightly just before. But the reason we're doing this, and I don't know if this is in the pattern or not. This is just something I always do with um, bases like this is because it's going to help when we try and do the short sides. I also always do the long sides first, people. And just looking at this, I need to do like three extra stitches, which sounds ridiculous, but I started too soon. So if I hadn't have done that, the base would be crooked, and we don't want that. So I literally just did then from there to there more, because I needed to come all the way to the edge. Don't mind that little corner. I'm just going to trim that off. Right. So clip. So now that I've clipped that, when I grab these two bits, it's got the flexibility to actually match up. And I'm going to use lots of clips on this, because again, we're fighting the shape of the back. So lots of clips help. If this was a lining piece, I wouldn't be half as concerned, but it's the exterior with a very stiff vinyl. So gotta do what I gotta do. Now, I'm not gonna put the last one on because I'm now gonna go in. So I'm doing again with the base side facing up and you wanna start where the other stitches are. And then we're just going to stitch along to where the other stitches are. Now again, because it's thick, I'm not back stitching because I don't want to break a needle. Other end. Looking good. So we can put that aside. I think 
Let me just double check that before we actually do it. Yes, there we are. Cool. On to the lining. Don't need that right now. Okay, so I'm doing this one a little bit differently. So let's start there. Um, and then this is the second pocket. So I've kind of sectioned it off in here, which I thought was a little bit clever of me. So that it was easier to do the video. So this is one lot of pocket. This is another lot of pocket. So the first one says zipper pocket, which I am going to do. And then second one says uh, slip pocket, which I am also going to do, but just slightly different. So it says to cut two different pieces to give like a faux top. But I wanted to use the vinyl along the top because I did. So the first thing I need to do is put right sides together. Now I've interfaced one piece with a woven and the other piece I haven't because I didn't want this too thick. So I'm going to stitch what's going to be considered the bottom together. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. Um, because the pattern says stitch top and bottom because they're different sizes. But. The, the pocket piece, or well, one of them is the same size. But I just, I want this vinyl. And I didn't have enough to do the whole lining part of the pocket in that vinyl. So now that I've stitched the bottom, we're going to bring it up. And I'm going to base those two layers together so that they are fabulously even. And you don't have to base it, you can clip it together. But I do find that much easier. Yeah, you waste some thread, but I've just saved myself a lot of time. So now we're going to take this. I personally like to pre-crease it in half or as best as in half as you can do right then I'm going to slot that over the edge that we basted so that we won't see the raw edges and it will give me the vinyl trim that I desire. Now this was just because I didn't have any more of this or I would have done it the pattern way and I didn't have anything else I really wanted to put along the top. I suppose I could have done black but it's just not where my brain was at. Always feel like you can adapt the bags to you. And either your supplies or your visions. Take your pick. Almost any slip pocket in any pattern can be transferred to another pattern. So even if you don't like someone's bag shape, but you love the way they've done the patterns, it's uh, like the pockets, it's a really good idea to still buy that pattern so that you can adapt it. All right. Fancy trim. Now I'm going to grab one exterior and we line it up Ah, oh, I pretty much got that on point straight up. I'm getting good at this. Alright, so what I might do is actually clip it in place. So there. So I'm going to grab a clip and put one here at this join and then down the bottom there. Then I'm going to spin it round. Now I'm not worried that this is looking like that because I am going to um, sew it in place in a second. As soon as I've clipped it to where it needs to be, we're going to stitch her down. Don't know why it just became her, but apparently it did. So I'm going to start with the bottom and I'm using a contrasting yellow thread so 
make sure you are slow and very, very precise. And back stitch. Then trim off the tails. And then we can just section this off. So I'm going to flip this over and follow the edge line and base this down. And the reason we stitch it over is because we've made a straight pocket that's going to a curved piece of fabric. So this is the easiest way to see where you're stitching instead of just blindly guessing. It's a nice little alternative for you. Then I can cut off the excess. One and two. Cut off the excess throughout the bin. Now we can divide this. So I'm gonna find the center, like I always do. And I'm going to crease it this time instead of what I usually do. We are creasing the center so that we know where the center point is. Like that. And then I'm going to take my ruler and rule some lines with my Chaco pen, which is getting dangerously low. I did try to order some more for my website yesterday, but they were out of stock again. Same with the 18mm rotary cutters and their blades. They are still out of stock. Unfortunately, I can't help that. Right, so we're going to start here. And I'm going to go forward, back, up. I'm going to go onto the vinyl. And then I'm going to go forward and back twice. Because that is a stress point. That's where we're going to pull it away the most. So I want to make sure that it's not going to break for its uh, future owner or if it was mine for myself because I am very rough with my stuff. I do not look after my bags half as well as other people would. And as bad as it is, it's because A, I change handbags a lot because I get sick of one style or one colour. And B, if it breaks, I can always just fix it. Ooh, my stomach is going off. Okay. Slip pockets. And you can see where my stitching is because it's yellow. So that's one side. Let's do our zipper pocket now. I will be doing it the way the pattern says, which I know is not normal for me for this type of pocket, but bear with me. So you should have fancy accent piece facing pocket. I don't ever interface the facing piece, which is why I didn't on the outside. It's just something I don't do. You are welcome to do it. It will just make it thicker. So you will need to definitely 100% iron it down. You won't be able to finger press it. It'll be too thick. So center point, center point, center point, lay this on because we need to cut a zipper hole that is the size of our um what's it called zipper accent piece i'm going to literally keep this on here and i am going to trace around inside that hole so that will now create the perfect size for this and that is important then i'm going to line up that center fold with the other center fold oh my stomach today like so and now we're going to stitch the long lines not the short ones That just pulled my fabric. Can you see how that's pulled the threads in my fabric? That was not very nice. Luckily for me, it's a facing piece. 
Um, so that tells me a couple of things. One, my needle's probably getting a bit blunt. And two, this needle is too thick for just this fabric because I do have a size 19 in, which is actually designed for the vinyl. So if you have a similar problem, one solution is have a second machine set up to sew linings and a different machine for all the thicker stuff which I would potentially do if I had some more room in this house. Um, or you can change out your needle each time, or you can do what I did, and when it pockers, just pull it back. So basically this piece has now got pocker lines, but that won't matter because it's a facing piece. So that's why I'm not super worried right now. Also, as a general rule, I don't th let things stress me out. And the end of these scissors are going blunt, so I'm going to have to get Hobby to sharpen them again soon. Because when I do that, the very end's not snipping. Okay. So now I'm going to finger press that one up. And then I'm going to switch and finger press this one down. Now, if you're not ironing, that is a very important thing to do. And then I'm going to shove all of this through the hole. And then you should be able to pull on that seam and finger press it pretty much flat. Now, it's not perfect as if you were to get up and iron it, but it also means you don't have to get up and iron it because that is now the facing at the back. If it's bothering you, you can double-sided tape it down as well, just as a thought. But let's pop that aside and we're going to grab our pocket piece and some zipper tape. So I want the zipper tape, the length of the pocket, And as you can tell, I don't tend to pre-cut my zipper because I could right now go, oh no, I want yellow on the inside. And that would still look cool. The two zips don't have to be the same colour in a bag. But I do like to pack it up once I'm done. So let's do that. So now, lining right side up, zipper right side up, stitch. Now you want to stitch this properly because you don't want it to come undone. And backstitch at the end. Trim your tail. Then we're going to grab the other side. So we're going to come up here. Now I'm not worried about the direction of the scales in the pocket. If you are worried about the direction, um, line this up like this, fold it, and then cut that fold and then twist the other piece around. I know it sounds excessive, but it would then make sure that everything's still lining up, but you would have to sit it like this up against it and then create that crease and cut there. And then that way it will still be even for you, uh, except your direction of your print inside the pocket would both go the same way. done that now I have to cut it anyway to be honest so could have happened I think I'm going up script for the pattern right now too I have a sneaking suspicion I'm doing it differently but whatever the same pocket can be done like seven different ways it's fine so I'm going to put my zipper pull on now I will have it closing to the left I think. Yes, I will, because that's the way I've done it. So then I'm just going to open this out. I also have to stitch this on, now that I've remembered. But this will go around it, and then we can just stitch it down. So let's put on our accent piece first. So again, I'm just going to tuck that under. I'm going to get some double-sided tape on the long parts of here 
because it will just hold it in place so I don't have to worry about it shifting. Um, also, if you've used a stretchy vinyl, this will help prevent it to shift while you're stitching it. Okay, peel one off, second one off, in the bin. Now we're just going to lay it over our beautiful pocket accent. And then I'm going to pull that back, although I don't think it's going to matter. But I am still going to pull it back because I want to. And I'm going to top stitch around the outside edge of the zipper pocket panel accent. Now, it may catch, it may not, it depends on what you've got going on. Oh, and I just ran out of bobbin. That was a terrible place for that to happen. <sighs> All right, I'm going to do a bobbin, change my pants, have some food, and come right back. Time-wise, I actually wasn't gone as long as you would think. Uh, like, five minutes. But I am now in my comfy pants. I've had some snacks. I will have a proper lunch after I finish this. So we're just continuing around where we left off. You can always go faster on the straight bits. And you always want to go nice and slow on the curvy bits. And you also don't really want to start on a curvy bit either. Back stitch. And then trim off all the tails you can see. Now this did catch that, so it is now back out of my way. Love it. And I accidentally moved everything when I stood up. So let's just drag this back. I'm going to lay it right sides up. Uh, so these pieces will actually be a different length now, by the way. So do make sure that you do it. Otherwise, you're going to have a much, much shorter pocket in a minute. So I'm going to lay this down in the middle. And I'm going to come in front of the way the zip's going to close. And I'm going to top stitch this down. Cross there. Needle down. Pivot. Cross the end. Needle down. Pivot. Up the other side. And then when I get back to the zipper, I'm going to lift up my foot, zip that. And now when I sew the rest of it, the zipper won't be in my way. And I didn't have to open it and distort the shape of the zipper. This is my new favorite way to do stuff. I say new, it's not that new. I've done it in several videos, but I used to do them a different way. I used to start in corners. I don't start in corners anymore. All right, trim off your tails as you see them. Done. Lift this and the pockets will now be even. So I'm just going to pull this aside and I'm going to stitch the sides together, not the bottom because that's where I'm going to turn the bag through. Other side. Making sure that we backstitch. Backstitching is important. It'll all come undone when we pull the thing through. And then I'm just going to open this zip so that I don't have to remember later. So let us build part of the lining. I'm going to put the lining right sides together, matching here to here and stitch on a joining stitch length. And we're gonna back stitch. Then we're gonna do the other side. Don't worry about that, that's just a tail that was stuck in the foot. It either dries out or you cut it at the end. 
Oh, not the tail. Trim off all the tails. Okay, so this is now what we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this zipper piece we made earlier. And as always, find the center. Which is there. To there. And clip. Same as this side. Now you can do this to the exterior or the lining, but the lining is more pliable, which is why I always do this like that. Then I am going to open the zipper right up. Right up. I'm going to take this side, find the center, make a little crease so that I can see it easily, and then match it with the center so that the lining fabrics are touching each other and then I'm going to work my way out and clip it in place and then go out the other way. Now I probably shouldn't have unzipped that as quickly as I did because now I'm going to have to zip it back up just to make sure I'm just going to zip one side to make sure that it's not twisted. See how it's twisted? We don't want twisted. What am I doing? Should have left it done up. Either way. We'll undo it in a second. I just want to make sure that when I stitch this down, there is no funny business going on. So that is now going to go to this side. I am again going to find the center of this side, which is there. And goes there. You can see why I didn't want it done up though, because right, much better. Grab some clips, and yes, I'm aware I haven't done up the bottom yet. In my brain, I have a plan that I think is going to work because I'm very conscious of how stiff my vinyl is. Uh, so I'm thinking of the best possible way to turn this bag through. And I've come up with it. And I'm going to show you. I'm not sure if this is what they did in the pattern or not. But I'm more concerned with what's going on. So it's very, very stiff. So I'm just going to leave the whole bottom open. We are going to... Oh, hold on. I'm going to do these back up again. I know I'm all over the place with these zips. But I really don't want anything to happen. So I'm going to turn this... Right sides out like that. And undo them. Right, so because I don't want... There we go. I don't want a twist. No twist is important. If I get a twist, I can fix it. We can just undo the screw and take the end off. But I am trying to do it so that we don't have a twist. Because it's important. So, now I'm just going to take all of this. And I'm thinking. When I hold the bag with the, dinosaur, uh, the dragon on the front, I want my zipper pocket to be on the opposite side. So that's how I'm putting this in. I knew I shouldn't have done up the zipper ends yet. They're going to frustrate me to no end. So the simple solution is always the best one. And that is to take the zipper ends off and just let it run free. Now as crazy as it seems that I'm now undoing what I've already done up, Thinking about this logically, I, by undoing this, I don't have to think about any of it. Which makes it much easier to deal with. Right, off, off and off. So now all of that can just tuck wherever it decides to hang. Nothing's going to get caught in the wrong spot. I can even take the zipper tape if I want to and clip it so that it's not going to float around. I can just clip it completely out of my way. And that feels like my best solution right now because it was frustrating me. 
I had to really try and think about which way to put everything. So I'm just not going to have that drama anymore. I'm going to fix it. So now that that's all clipped in place, I can start at my side seam here and add a clip and then work my way up the curve because it should all match. Get some more clips. And then we are adding this into that and that center point should line up with your center seam on the outside. You also want to make sure that you push your rectangle rings so that they flop down. That way you're also not going to hit them while you're trying to sew this together. All these little things add up to a much easier sewing experience. I've undone the zip because it was just going to get all screwy and I didn't want to play that game. And if I had sewn it the wrong way, then I would have had to unpick or undo it anyway. So I just figured I'd save myself some drama and do it now. I'm going to come and line up this side seam. And then this corner. Push that down, which was the rectangle ring for anyone that couldn't see. I'm not sure if you can actually see that. I always like to clip in my lap too, which has worked out great for the angle that we're on today. And the reason I do that is because when it's closer, if I'm clipping over here, my arms get tired. Because they're, oops, there's a lot going on. See, I just dropped something. It's not my video without throwing something on the floor. It's never intentional. I really have to stress that point. I just dropped things. And it's not just on camera. I do it off camera as well. Okay. Done. So I am going to stitch it with the lining side up. So I'm going to start like this. I am going to start on a straight part because that's what's going to be easiest for me. And off we go. Stitch, back stitch. Now again, remembering about all those layers. So that you don't damage anything. I am now going to bring the bag up because it is indeed a 3D object. I'm going to take the clip off. Oh, my phone, my, not my phone, my laptop turned itself off silent. Always a fun one. So I'm going slowly around that curve because it's a very tricky curve. Uh, if you have a cylinder arm machine, you would do this in the opposite way and I reckon it would be much easier. Um, and I should really do another video on that machine soon. Some bags are easier on one machine than the other and some parts are easier. So when I'm not recording, sometimes I will use both machines to make the bag. Because it truly is easier on some aspects. Like sewing this, where I wouldn't have to fight and push everything out of the way, this would be easier on the cylinder arm. Whereas uh, making a siren, so my siren beach bag pattern, is much easier on this machine because it's lots of long flat pieces and this has got the table which makes it easier to do long flat pieces um, but in saying that the cylinder arm has a binding attachment which makes binding quicker and when we go back to the start we are going to backstitch I am now going to grab my zigzag scissors and I'm just going to cut away at the corner so that it sits nicely. Like that. Love it. 
So now to turn the bag through, we just do the whole base. Simple. Wow, simple-ish. This is still very, very stiff. Um, but that's a good thing because it means the bag's going to stand up gloriously well because there's no foam in this pack. Or if there is, I didn't use it. I actually don't remember. I cut it out so long ago. So we're pulling, we're poking, we're prodding. I'm going to grip it with my knees and then push this bit because it's stiff. There's a lot going on here. It's nearly out. Now can you imagine me trying to do this through a zipper pocket? Because I don't see it. I think I would have gotten very cranky by now. Oh, and I didn't push a foot on properly, so I'm going to have to fix that now. Oh, come on. Right. This vinyl is definitely a measure. Um, I've got a couple of dints. I do think that they will come out, but I can also iron the bag from the inside to help them come out, because they might not want to as easy as you'd hoped. Alright, so before I go any further, I need to fix the bag foot. Because it's come off. So I'm going to grab both a new post and a new foot, because there's a fair chance that I damaged the post and we just don't want that. So I'm going to put that one straight in the bin. Put in another one, click it on, and then the tricky bit, this is going to be the tricky part, because I then have to take this and get it all the way to the foot. So there is a reason why we usually don't do this, but I'm not going to get this on any other way. So it can be done, just bear with me. You basically have to bring all the bag into the throat of this to get there. Or we can hammer it. No, I don't want to hammer it. So this, so normally I would screw it to a table like this and this would be much easier to do. But this is going to be a bit tricky. So I'm going to hit pause until I get it lined up. So Hold plan on. A didn't work. So what I did instead was I squished this over and then used my pliers to press it down. Uh, so now the bag foot is back in. So now we just want to turn all the bag out as best we can. And so now I'm going to reach into the pocket to grab the base of the bag. So we're going to pull that through. So the first thing I want to do is stitch all the bottom closed. Now we'll be able to do this through the pocket no problem. The only time this doesn't work is on the Baronia Bowler Bag by Blue Color because of the way the zip's installed. Everything else you should be able to do it this way. So we are going to stitch and back stitch and we're going to sew the whole base of the bag together. Like so. And back stitch at that end as well, trimming off that tail so that it's not in my way. Then I am going to grab this. Now I haven't finished turning the bag through properly, so don't judge too much. So I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to line up the two seam allowances. I'm going to add some clips so that it stays in place because I like it when that happens. Uh, as many clips as you feel is necessary. Three, five, one, whatever's going. So I'm gonna again I'm gonna line up that center. Now I need to make sure that this seam allowance that we just created goes the same way 
as the other side. That is important, otherwise the bottom of the bag will not sit perfectly flat because it will have a twist. Right, and clip. So now I'm going to stitch those short edges. Now you can do it any which way. I'm just ignoring my zipper for a minute. We're going to deal with that later. It'll be fine right where it is. Floating around. And back stitch. And then trim off the tails. And then we're going to do this end. So I'm going to stick it under. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. I'm definitely going to have to grab my mini iron to flatten all of this bag out from the inside. But that's okay. So that's now the base done. You just want to double check that it's all closed before you go any further. So just double check that. And then we're just going to stitch the pocket shut. So I'm just going to tuck under, I tuck under about three eighths, just under half an inch, because quarter inch is quite hard to tuck under with just your fingers. You can iron a quarter of an inch. Um, but tucking is definitely a little bit more tricky. And you can top stitch this bag if you want to, uh, but mine is stiff enough that I don't want to. It was, it, it's stiff, which is good. I'm not complaining about the stiffness of the bag. I do like it, but it also just means that I will not be top stitching. I will, however, be uh, Tory squishing this bit. Like that. Especially here where the seam is, it is quite stiff and doesn't want to sit the way I want it to sit. So we do have to do a lot of that. Right. Back to the zippers. We can put them back on now. I know they went on before, so they will go on again. Um, and that way I didn't really have to worry about where the zippers were sitting while I was trying to stitch around. One half. Now I'm going to put both sides on to make sure that it's even before I add my ends on again. And if you did um, fabric ends, you can again just stitch them on, same holes. You could add a rivet if you wanted to, to have some bling on the end. And they line up Schmicko. I know Schmicko is not strictly a word. It is in my life though. So I'm going to push the zip in. And I get my electric screwdriver again. And then we just need to make the handles. Um, so I'm doing different handles to the pattern because I didn't want fabric on my handles for this bag because I didn't think it was going to match like I wanted it to. We're getting there. Excellent. Other side. So again, I'm going to fold that under and under till I get a point and then push the zipper as far in as I can get it in. Uh, Cause if it's touching all the way at the end, it's got a good amount that is screwed in. And again, screwing, screwing. Done. The bag's pretty much done. You can see it does need some good Tory squishing, but it is looking pretty cool so far. But we're not finished. So I am just going to do normal in half handles, but we're going to do a lot more stitching than I normally do so that the yellow comes through and it looks fabulous. So we want the join in the middle. Or as close to the middle as you can manage. If you're new to this, uh, draw a line. And that'll get you in the middle. It 
If I had have had any more of the vinyl, I would have put like a, a thin quarter inch strip down the center. But instead, we're just going to do lots of stitching. So it will still look cool. So I'm joining it. So what I'm doing, so that you can see, is I'm pinching it together and then pushing down and squishing. Because I want, even though there will be a gap, I want to not really see it. So we bring it together and then push it down and join it. Now this is the Pacifica vinyl. So it's a lot more pliable than the last one. Together and down. Together and down. So you don't want in there to be a gap. So that's why we pinch together and push. You'll find that there is no gap at all, which is awesome. I am less particular about this when I'm making straps out uh, with something else on top of here because if there is a gap, you don't see it. So, firstly, decent sized stitch length. I'm going to start on the outer edge. I am going to back stitch. I am going to pivot and I'm going to jump over to the other side through the same thing. Now you can't just stitch here on these types of handles. We also have to do that in the centre. But I'm getting to that. So then from there I am going to go a foot length in from the stitching that I just did. Alright, and then I'm going to swivel and I'm going to go a foot length stitching in from the other side. So we're going to have four glorious lines. I've done all that from the top, so now I've got a beautifully even uh, stitch pattern, which I think looks cool. I also have done in the past a really cool zigzag where I do the outer lines and then I zigzag from one side to the other. That takes a lot of planning. That was in the Bend and Snap by Lynn's Handmade because I did it in rainbow thread. Um, it did take a lot of planning, but it was worth it because it was fabulous. So if you're just looking for a random strap, go watch that video. Because I was very satisfied with how it came out. Anyway. Right. Bend and push. Pinch and push. Pinch and squish. Ooh, could be called the pinch and squish. Pinch. Squish. So again, we want to make sure that that gap is non-existent and you want to be as even in both sides as possible so that nothing's going to pop up and startle us later. Spend, pinch and squish. And then I'm just going to go out See, that way doesn't work as well. Squish. Pinch. Squish. Okay. So let's do the next one. We're going to stitch and back stitch. We're going to get to the end and back stitch. We're going to pivot. We're going to jump to the other side. Now, if your vinyl is a twisty vinyl, just always start from one end. Uh, but if you're getting your plain vinyls from me, they are fine, because that's what this is. Stitch, back stitch. 
edge of the foot on the edge of the stitching. So according to my foot plate, that's about three eighths of an inch in from the edge. If anyone's interested in specific measurements. Voila. Then you just have to cut all the crazy off the end. You could also put strap-ins on this too, actually, if you so desired. Oh, and this end here. Alright, so now that that's done, all we have to do is attach our handles. So the first thing I want is my rivet um, template. Which I now have all of my templates, all the handy ones, hanging off my cart. Because my cart is fabulous. Now, because I'm using little 7mm rivets today, we are going to do the two holes on the strap. Because, you know, why not? Now, I always put this on the edge and measure a quarter inch up. And then I'm going to do one, two, three, four holes because I'm using standard. If they were chunky, I would do five holes. Alright, so we line this up on the edge. We're going to go there and there and then one, two, three, four, and then there. So this is less measuring and more counting, uh, but it works for me, which is why I have them. One, two, one, two, three, four. There's a lot of holes I have to punch, but at least everything's going to be even and beautiful. One, two, three, four. So if I did chunky, don't forget, count five. Um, and you can do two sets of rivets, and you could have done all of that. So you could have set them, so I could have done two sets. So I could have done one, and then half an inch later, two, and then counted the, the four, and then put them in. Uh, it just depends on the look you want. It's why we make our own bags, right? To have everything fabulously custom. Or at least that's why I started. Then this end. And then this one. So I used a red um, array, uh, friction marker, which I find the red I can see easier on black than the blue one. It leaves like a very red pigmented dot. So while you probably can't see it on your screen, I can see that dot really well. <laughs> okay. Yes, I sneeze weird. Don't judge me. It's fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the side with the bend, and I want that to be on the inside. So I'm going to have it facing up and thread up through the bottom and then put my rivets in. So I've got two because it's they're little uh, and it also makes me want to now stock 7mm rivets. Damn it! I want everything. I am probably now going to do that by the way. So not this week though. I spent all my money on vinyl. So I'm going to put my two caps on. Like that. So you click them on with your fingers and then we're going to squish them together. So they are clicked on now. One and two. Ta -da! And then we're going to go. So I'm going to have it facing with the join side up. And then make sure there's no twists. And then again, feed up through the bottom. And then add my rivets in. So 
So usually I do half inch on the end. This time I decided to do a quarter just so I didn't have much overhang because I know the person that's going to buy this and she likes longer handles. So this is the way to get the longest possible handle for her while also still sticking to the pattern. Okay, so that is one handle on. Um, so even though I did black, the black is now matching the side accent, which is why I did that. But the yellow ties it into the bag. So there is method to all of my crazy. I'm just going to tilt this up so that you can see a bit better. There we go. So I'm going to, again, join side up, feed it in from the bottom. I'm going to put the two rivets through. And then I'm going to bend it over. If you're putting um, strap ends on, you may want to put even more overhang so that they can sit up a bit nicer. I don't know. It depends on what you're doing. That's why there's so many holes in the rivet um, spacing template. Well, Joyster then. Okay, so squish. Squish. Smooth it up. Around it goes, up and in. Push these in. You could also use um, spike rivets for here, depending on the look you're going for, of course. Or you could use um, like sparkly rivets. One and two. Again, we just want to get it under here, squish one side, squish the other side, and your bag is done. I will be giving this a final iron before I do the intro so that you will see it at the start. You won't know that, but anyway, that's fine. But that's a really cute bag. It's a good size. I like the side bit that's going on, and I like that we can now go and then open it up fully. So again, you can top stitch it if you want to, but I have decided instead I will just Tory squish it so it sits nicely, which will be after this video. But there you go. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope that was somewhat informative for you, and I hope that you learn a new skill. All right, till next time, guys. Bye-bye.